And he should. I want to know why old Chubby Ailes is not suspending old O'Reilly. And I want to know why Rachel Madcow's not running with this story later. Because it's a story. It's a media story. Madcow should run with it. Rachel Madcow should run with this story. And what is the story? The story is very personal for me. Because I have put up with being blacklisted by Fox News for a very long time. Many of you think we're all on the same team. We're not. There is no team. It's the most vicious business in the world. There is no team whatsoever. And the fact of the matter is, when he says a thing like that, and he's been caught making it up, I think he should be called on the carpet for it. I mean, if we ridicule the government on a regular basis, and that really is our job, isn't that what the fourth estate's job is, not to become the fifth column? How many years have I told you that? Our job as the fourth estate is to constantly be a thorn in the side of the government. That's what we're supposed to do. That's our job. Sorry, Teddy, my dog just cried. It's okay, things will be okay. I told you, he's my bellwether of when I've gone over the edge. Sorry, Ted. Normally sleeps through a show. Right now he's agitated. So I better stop it right now and go feed him a greenie or something. He actually cried, I swear to God. Did you hear him cry? Did you hear him come on the microphone? He he whined over. What did I say that made him whine? What did I say? What did I say? Does anyone know what I said that made the dog whine? I, where did I go with my say? Because something in my voice must have gotten to him. Oh, I was talking about the fourth estate, not the fifth column. And I said it's our job to criticize the government. That's the only reason we're in business is to keep the government semi-straight, right? They may not like us for it, hate us for it, but they respect us for it if we're honest. I would think, unless you live in Argentina in the, in the 70s. Okay, so when you have a media that is compliant and part of the government media complex, they're no longer the media. They're not the fourth estate. They're the fifth column. They're marching with the government. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to say to you. Now, if you can't count on the, on the media telling you the truth, who do you count on? So that's why I have an obligation to point out that I think O'Reilly pulled a fast one on his audience, and he owes the audience an apology, and he owes me particularly an apology, and he should retract it. He'll never mention my name, obviously, because he's jealous of me. He always has been in my estimation. The most he might say is, well, the factor has a correction to make. We were not the first ones to uh, broadcast a terrorist name. It was mentioned on a, an obscure radio show that no one listened, <laughs> nobody listens to. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I understand to most of you this is petty stuff, but it's not petty at all. Because if they could fire Brian Williams for similar fibs, right? They got rid of Dan Rather for a fib, for God's sakes. The guy is teaching journalism in Mexico somewhere. In a Mexican junior high school. Look what they did to him. Okay, back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or Swiss America. I'm, I'm back. We don't need the music. That's all. You know, I had a fantasy just now that... The country finally came together. That all of the partisan divide and ended because of a shooting like this. I had a dream that Obama finally realized that, you know, maybe he's wrong. Maybe he's just really a liberal partisan and he doesn't really get it. And he's been so indoctrinated into believing the liberal pap that he practices it. And then finally even he wakes up and Loretta Lynch wakes up and says, wait a minute, you know, those guys on the other side, they're not 100% wrong. Even France has closed down radical mosques. Maybe we ought to reach out and talk to some of them. I had a fantasy that in a, in a sane nation that I'd be invited to the White House. Would you believe that? I know it's never going to happen. It can't. Not in this country. Not under this hunter. I wasn't even invited to the White House when Bush was in office. He invited uh, everyone else but me. It's okay. I'm an independent. I, I'm not a Republican. I'm never a registered Republican. Don't get me wrong. I'm just an ornery older guy who's an independent. In other words, I think like your uncles used to think, or your fathers. And uh, as such, I'm an American with an independent mind, and uh, I go in different directions politically, depending upon the situation. But, I mean, we're in a very dangerous place, and you think you'd wake up after a thing like this in Southern California where the government itself would stop this liberal insanity. But it got worse. The Attorney General says that anyone who says anything that might lead to violence 
will be prosecuted. She means she's going to persecute anyone she doesn't like. This is impossible to believe. It's like a reign of terror. Instead of lightening up on those of us who know what's going on, they're doubling down in threatening us. You talk about a chilling atmosphere coming out of the White House? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. All right, we have Waleed Shubat online. He'll be with us in a minute, but I have to clean, clean up a few things I started before we get to our great guest who speaks Arabic, former member of the PLO. I've had him on before. The guy is just great. He's going to tell us whether or not there are any mosques in America that are preaching uh, hatred and violence. Because in France, they closed several down. Well, we wake up here and we hear from the attorney general in front of a Muslim group just last night after this massacre. She's saying that uh, if any commentary edges towards violence, we will take action. I don't know what she means by edges towards violence. I agree with her that anyone who preaches violence towards Muslims should be investigated. But what does edging towards violence mean? What does that exactly mean? Whatever she wants it to mean? And I think she ought to clarify that statement. She made a mistake. I make mistakes, I clarify them. She's not above the law as I am not above the law. Nor is O'Reilly. Here's what Thomas Zizo writes. Savage, you announced the name first, that's clear. But at the end of the day, the lie, although a felony in your eyes, is a misdemeanor in the eyes of others. O'Reilly, Kelly, and the rest of the Fox hacks are starting to feel their ratings drop and they're freaking out. Having said that, use this infraction to continue to build your larger case against Fox and the Praetorian Guard media. All your listeners are behind you and know that Fox is equal to or worse than MSNBC. And I want to just end it on one note here. Uh, I'm asking for Rachel Madcow to pick up on this story and run with it because she doesn't like him or me. This is a perfect opportunity for Madcow to step in. And at least she'll get the truth out. And I want to conclude it at this moment by saying what O'Reilly said is equivalent to what Brian Williams did, in my opinion. So what? what is good for the goose is good for the gander. NBC had to pull off Brian Williams because of the outcry against his fibs. Now, why should O'Reilly not be called on the carpet for this? I want to know why. Now let's go to a far more important story, which is our guest and what he's going to tell you. Waleed Shobat, always a pleasure. Thanks for being with us. You bet. Thank you, Mike. Waleed. Waleed, you know, we have a very serious situation in America, worse than it ever was. You know better than I what's coming. The lawyer for the shooter's family had the nerve to say that she didn't even do it. Did you hear that lawyer at all, Waleed? No, I haven't heard the lawyer, uh, but we've seen this before with the uh, pressure cooker bomber, Tsar Nayev. The mother and the family came out and said similar things. Yet the mother supported the jihadi, supported the martyrdom of her sons. So it's very logical that the Muslims, and the mother, and I heard the mother lived with them too, uh, in the case of the San Bernardino massacre. She must have seen them making bombs and pipe bombs. In fact, yeah, where, 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 is, where is grandma? Where is grandma where they dropped off the infant? Where is she? But, you know, let's go to the biggest story. Loretta Lynch, our attorney general, came out today with an astonishing statement, Waleed. Have you heard about this one? Yes, I have. I posted on it. It's very obvious. Okay, good. Well, Aldo, for everyone listening, our attorney general said this in front of a Muslim group just yesterday. Please listen to clip one. Now, obviously, this is a country that is based on free speech. But when it edges towards violence, when we see uh, the potential for someone to lift, lifting that mantle of anti-Muslim rhetoric, or, as we saw after 9-11, violence directed at individuals who may not even be Muslims but may be perceived to be Muslims, um, and, and they will suffer just as well, just as much. Uh, when we see that, we will take action. Are you shocked by this, Willie? Uh, actually, no, I'm not shocked because that's the way it has become under the Obama administration. They try to make it workplace violence the whole time when it was obviously it had the signature of ISIS. In fact, they went to Corona Mosque in Corona, California. I investigated the mosque itself, and uh, if you take a look at the mosque, it looks like something out of Saudi Arabia. They talk about how to become uh, uh, jihadis as well. In fact, the Facebook of that mosque is being scrubbed, and so I access the. You can't even access the speeches unless you're one of a member. So, but you can see it's how to become like Salah al-Din in jihad. It's very obvious what they're teaching in that mosque that these. The, the same uh, portrayal of the massacre in San Bernardino had it on his Facebook page before that also was scrubbed. 
In other words, you know, they scrub everything out so they can make the Muslims look good and the families of the Muslims look good. They bring family member who was in the military. Look, Savage, my brother was in the Air Force. He guarded nuclear facilities. He's very much an Islamist. His wife's from Gaza. She's pro Hamas. Her family, the whole family is working for Hamas operatives here in the U.S. And he's in the United States Air Force. So the idea that... Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. The, 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 you lost me here. The brother of the massacre, uh, the guy who committed the massacre, is still in the Air Force? No, I'm talking about my brother. The brother is in the Navy of the massacre. The brother, Farouk's brother, was in the Navy. He's coming out and saying, oh, look, you know, I served in the Navy and uh, I fought terrorism. Oh, hello? This is from Pakistan. These guys are from Pakistan. If my brother was in the Air Force, he's very much an Islamist, marrying a Hamas activist and marrying a family into a family that all are very pro-Hamas, being activists in the U.S. What makes us think that his brother is not the same? Uh, so, you know, you have in the ISI, the intelligence of the Pakistanis, you have fighting terrorism and all these things. But a lot of them are operatives, part of ISIS, part of Taliban, part of the whole spiel. In fact, these are Pakistani citizens. You know, in Pakistan, you have tens of thousands of passports and identifications being given to people, you know, birth certificates. It's so easy to get a birth certificate. In fact, I doubt that her name is Tashfin Malik. I've never heard of the name Tashfin Malik. Tashfin Malik is a code name. It's an ISIS code name. It comes mm. from uh, the wars from Andalusia, from the Andalusia where the Muslims that invaded Andalusia in Spain. And so they use these code words. These terrorists, like Ahmed Rassam, in, uh, who was uh, behind an attempt in New York, he changed his passport to, to Ben Norris, a name, a Western name. So these people can come in from anywhere in the world. The system does not work. It's impossible to be able to filter the good, the bad from the ugly with the system that we have. Absolutely, virtually impossible. Well, Waleed, in France, very left-wing government, socialist Hollande, right after the Paris massacre, they immediately took action, including closing down three or four mosques. Now, the question is, you know better than any of us listening to this show, how many mosques in this country, what percentage of the mosques, percentage now, in your guesstimate, are preaching violence? <laughs> oh, almost all of them, virtually, almost every one of them. I, I lived in California. My dad used to go to a mosque. My family went to a mosque. Every one of them, almost oh my God. every one of them, teaches all these things. Every mosque I investigate. I've been doing this for how many years? Every mosque. Well, Ali, hold on. Attorney General Lynch vows to prosecute anti-Muslim speech. So you've just committed anti-Muslim speech even though you're a Muslim. In fact, I was prohibited. I spoke in New Jersey. The district attorney of New Jersey now is making it official that I'm not allowed to speak anywhere in the country, even though we have free speech to the police officer. What? Wait a minute. In, in when did this happen? When did this happen, Waleed? Just a week before the Paris attack. Just a few weeks before the... Wait, you cannot speak in New Jersey? Why? Why is that? Because I'm considered a profiler. I call for profiling Muslims in this country. Now, you can argue and say profiling is not 100% foolproof, but it does filter 80 to 90% of terrorists. It does filter. It works. It works for the Israelis. They do it all the time. They don't have any hijacking of airliners. And so, because it does work, they don't allow me to speak. And they, they keep talking about that, uh, oh, you know, this is against Islam and so on and so forth. So I'm not permitted to speak by the U.S. government to any police officers, emergency responders, so on and so forth. And I give them all the clues. I've given them everything that's on my website. In fact, I've given them how they were infiltrated. In fact, I give them operatives who infiltrated. And this is supposed to be a closed venue in which they made it public and they succumbed to the Council of American Islamic Relations. So in other words, care is what dictates who can teach homeland security in this country in the FBI. Care. This is the way it is in this country. And so, you know, you can lead the horse to the water, but you can't make him drink. You know, uh, I can't do, force them to listen to me. L uh, Walid Shobat speaks Arabic fluently, obviously, because he's from the Palestinian. He's a Pal you're Palestinian Arab, correct? Correct. I can read you Arabic. Okay. Speak Arabic right now, if you want. Right. And I, I love when you speak Arabic on the show because it's classic Arabic. It's beautiful to listen to. 
But today, the Attorney General, Loretta Lynch, vows to prosecute anyone guilty of what she describes as violence-inspiring speech. Does this mean she 